Welcome to the Healers Cafe, the number one show for medical practitioners and holistic healers to have heart-to-heart conversations about their day-to-day lives while sharing their expertise for improving your health and wellness. Welcome to the Healers Cafe, and today I have with me Jonathan J. He is a shamanic healer and also a PhD with a career in like gender, race, and human interactions. So I'm really thrilled to have an open discussion. It sounds like a, to some people it might sound strange, a PhD and your job title is a shamanic healer. So how did all that come together? Why don't we start there? Oh, wow. How long have you got? <laughs> So about about 20 years ago, a little more than 20 years ago, I started, I, I had always been a spiritual seeker, but I started um, really getting drawn towards shamanism. I was, I was at a, at a laundromat and kind of depressed and down about my life. And I looked up and there was a flyer on the wall. It said, depressed, come try shamanic journeying. And I was like, and my mother had just started um doing some sh- experimentation with shamanic journeying in Maine I was in Massachusetts at the time and so I went and checked it out and needless to say I completely fell he- head over heels with this sort of technology this modality where I could really access uh I could really access visual wisdom um I could I could I could ask a question and get a, a response from spirit instead of what I, you know, I'd grown up Catholic and you just sort of go and you kneel and you, you pray and you hope, uh, but not, you don't see much progress. And so I started down this path and a few years later, I got a certification in shamanic healing with Evelyn Reisdyke and Allie Knowlton from spirit passages in Maine. And they're, they're my teachers and they're beautiful people. And so I was called as part of this to become a healer, but I didn't answer the call at first. Um, Because I had trauma, I I was sexually abused and I I went and got a massage license or I almost got a massage license. And as part of that, there were, there was a, a, a practicum requirement and a couple of men did inappropriate things while I was, doing my practicum work and i just thought well, i don't want that i don't want anything to do with that so i walked in the other direction and i was a carpenter for a while and i one day i took inventory of my life looked at what i was interested in and it and i had been reading i had always had the sustained interest in ancient cultures and i'd been reading a lot about ancient cultures and ancient wisdom and ancient symbolism and so I decided to, that I would become an archaeologist. Mm-hmm. And I went back to college. I had dropped out of college. I went back to college, got my bachelor's degree, went straight into a PhD program and here in California. And I, uh, you know, 10 years later, had a PhD. And then, so, one, so, so while I was in graduate school, I really got away from the spiritual portion of my life. Mm-hmm. really got it in you know deeply intellectual the, the I went into the closet spiritually basically it's not very welcome in the academy mm-hmm. but then when I got out my life was actually midstream my life started to fall apart and you know my my marriage was breaking up and it was you know I had I had I had a lot of difficulties I had some some addiction problems and I realized that I needed to get back to my spiritual practice, which is what I did. And then I started to heal the trauma. Mm -hmm. And as I started to heal it through therapy and through shamanism, through um, alternative modalities and reflexology, I just basically, you know, whoever I felt like I felt called, I felt like could help me. um, I went to. And so as, so pretty shortly after I started really getting into the trauma and healing it, Um, I, you know, my guide started to really get vocal, like, you you know, you're supposed to be a healer and, you know, here it is 20 years later and, you know, what's happening. So I, I started to practice and, and here we are, I, have been practicing now actively for about five years and, 
and I love it. And, mm -hmm. and, and at this point I have really developed my gifts and I'm realizing that the whole, nothing went to waste, right? The whole, the whole intellectual journey into the ancient world is now, you know, folded hand in glove with, with the spiritual journey. And I just had a workshop a week last weekend, a channeling workshop where I wove, I rewove my story into, you know, appreciation, this appreciation for the ancient world that I've always had, that it's in my spirituality as well as my intellectual life. And rather than keeping them separate, which is what I had been doing, the yeah. healing, the healing, the current healing is coming from, from synthesizing them, from reuniting mm -hmm. them. Hmm. I think that's typical of very straightforward journeys. <laughs> like <yours. laughs> Yes, right. It's actually quite funny, you know, it's like often it's a retrospective view, right? And you kind of yeah, go, yes. well, I've always been who I am, drawn to what I'm drawn to, right? And some things yes. you do, a, uh, you know, a little bit of a compensation for this. I, I mean, just I'll make it your interview, but just to make it short so you understand. I went into law school and I actually did my, mm. uh, was actually doing my master's in law. And then I realized that empowerment came through you know medicine as in taking charge of your own health is my understanding of what medicine of course i yeah. found out it's not quite like that but right. but the two have come together brilliantly in the work that's mm. necessary right now you know so it's um it's, yes. it's interesting how it's you know when when my kids ask me well how did you know what you want to be when i grew up i said i haven't grown up yet you know and and <laughs> <laughs> and the path is not over, right? It's like, it's right. versions of yourself becoming l larger and more, you know, more um, impregnated with meaning, you know, in that sense, right? Yeah. So yeah. you talk about relationship. Um, yeah. Shall we go down that avenue a little bit? Yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to. Yeah. Go for it. <laughs> what can you tell us? <laughs> well, you know, so here's another area where I, I study it as, as, a, as a professor and I teach it to my students. And I also, it's also in the healing room and it's also in my relationship, right? Uh, or my relationships, I should say. It's not as though I only, I only have one relationship. We all have relationships with multiple people. Yeah. Um, I, but I was thinking of my romantic relationship. So one of the things I'm really interested in in the ancient world is how people relate to each other differently than we relate to each other today. Mm -hmm. And what I find is that many, you know, my deep, if, if I go deep into my ancestry and I also work, we, we have an initiative called Ancestral Voices where, I, where we work with a Native American elder. Mm -hmm. um, this work is about mm -hmm. connecting with people who identify themselves as a constellation of relationships rather than an individual. And those relationships are with persons that aren't, aren't exclusively human. Mm -hmm. And, and so this is why, you know, ancient people, native Americans, you know, these things, they, this is why they had such, um, such a sustainable relationship with their environment and with each other is because they didn't think of themselves as, you know, the, the, the pool ball on the pool table, knocking against other, you know, discrete ent entities. They didn't think of themselves as individuals. They thought of themselves as this stream of relationships and therefore relationships become important. Relationships with people of the same gender, relationship of people with people of a different gender, relationship with people of the same group and different group. And all, all of these relationships need to be treated with respect and with, you know, with, with the proper care. Whereas we think of ourselves as individuals in the West and tend to, you know, we think about, you know, we, we, we bring what we want and who we are. Um, but these, this kind of sort of way of thinking is more about how I interrelate with others. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, one of the things that I learned as an anthropologist is that all of these social practices exist on a spectrum. So, you know, romantic relationships, how I identify as a gen, as, as you know, as a 
gendered being, mm -hmm. um, how I identify as a member of society. We tend to think very black and white in the West, but people, um, relational people think of themselves in, in terms of their interactions and their relationships. So it, it brings a whole different mindset to the, to the table. Mm. And it's, and it's, it's, I've, it, I'm still learning how to think this way because we don't, we don't, we aren't growing up, mm -hmm. we don't grow up this way. Right. And, and our egos like to step in. Mm -hmm. can, can you give like an example of what you're, you're meaning? Yeah. So for example, the Cree people of, of the, of Northeastern North America, they, um, they have this belief that other animals are people are also people and each mm -hmm. each each person each kind of person brings their own um brings their own needs and wants and character and medicine right mm -hmm. and so when when i for example when i want to to have a lookout when i want to take a 30 30 yard view when i want to want a view from above right i consult with the hawks because they have a view from above right literally uh in a shamanic sense in a right. in a in a physical sense but also in a in a in a um, spiritual sense right and mm -hmm. so and so um i so my relationship with hawk as a shaman is extremely important because it gives me this mm -hmm. view from above that I don't have as a regular human. Um, and this, this is the, a very, this is very closely related to indigenous ways of thinking where um, a, we can get outside of ourselves, right? We can, we can see from through a different perspective, we can connect with, uh, with uh, non-human persons, I guess you call them. Mm -hmm. And, and um offer them something in return as well mm -hmm. so so rather than thinking of myself as J. Dubois PhD um you know shaman shamanic healer executive director of a nonprofit I I am I am one person in in relation in this conversation and then I will take this conversation and it will be become part of who I am and then I will take it to the next conversation and build mm -hmm. upon this right and and so so every every person's input is part of who I am mm -hmm. and I, I I just I feel like I went um I feel like I went through from from indigenous views of knowledge to mine but but it's it's very it's very related mm -hmm. in other words th this relational view is rather than thinking of a, of of ourselves in our identities and our egos and what we do, we think of ourselves from the perspective of the we, mm -hmm. and also and also in motion. The other thing about an identity and an ego is that it's, it's solid and static, right? I am blank, mm -hmm. right? right? Whereas this 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 view is more in process, right? This is who I am in this conversation with you right now. And mm -hmm. I grow from this conversation and take it to the next conversation. And we, and we each, we build from there, right? As people. Right. right. I mean, it has a different foundation in that you are in conversation. Yes. You know, to start with, right? So it's right. like, you right. know, when you, were, when you were explaining this, I was sort of seeing, it's like, when I, you know, when I started my practice, um, you know, with people, I, I would always ask in the room, not out loud, but, you know, as my patient was laying here, you know, for, for the guidance that I needed and, yes. and yes. different, different entities, beings, you know, came to me to, to guide, right? And, and yes. um, and I have a big relationship with the, the dolphins. <laughs> so mm. it's quite interesting. You know, it's like, it's a, it's, a, it's a conversation that I thought was so natural that I brought into my practice that I, um, I naturally hear sounds in the body and stuck places, which ah. makes perfect sense if, 
I've incorporated part of dolphinhood <laughs> into my mm, being. Yes, yes. Right? Yes, and, yes. and I didn't I didn't know that other people couldn't because you know now I teach the method methodology I use called Bowen therapy. Yeah. But um I didn't know that other people can't hear. So I would say just like that, that sound. Uh, you know, and it's like they can't hear that sound. <laughs> so it's like, right. you know, it's interesting how, you know, it's like it's um it's like a it's a not a I don't want to use the word group think it has terrible connotations these days, but it's, yeah, it's no, yeah. this idea of yeah, you are moving through time with different conversations and different people bring up other aspects of yes. people yeah. yourselves, right? In some yes. way. In physical reality, mm -hmm. my my being does not end with my skin. Right. right. Just yeah. just as just as the simplest example, when I touch when I touch this screen right here, mm. it my, the molecules from my finger go into that screen and the molecules from that screen go into my finger. So really what seems solid to us is not. But mm. then you take this into the relational perspective. And like your example, you 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 don't end with you. You uh, end with, mm. you know, you you bleed into dolphinhood. Right? right, you have this <laughs> this sort of dolphin way of understanding, and I have this hawk way of looking at things, uh -huh. and you know, snake as well is one of my one of my mm -hmm. um, close animals, and snakes weave together, and snakes snakes take snakes take information whole, snakes snakes take their prey mm -hmm. whole, right? They eat it, and then they digest it over a long period of time, and this is very much how I am with information and with with wisdom mm -hmm. right i take in a lot of information and i don't really at first i'm like okay i don't really know what to make of this and then mm -hmm. a few days later a week later i start to oh oh right this mm -hmm. comes to something new new things start to emerge so rather than just being um uh, this guy who who ends at you know the at the tips of my fingers and and my toes um i have some essence of snake i have some essence of hawk and I have some f essence of my partner, Winnie, because I spend so much time with her. And I have some essence of my friend, Howie, because I spend a lot of time with him and we interact and have a lot of idea exchange, et cetera. Um, yes. And, and so this, you know, it's, it's very interesting what you say about your healing practice, because this is very shamanic, this, this um, you know, he hearing where the blockage is i i have medical intuition which means that i feel it in my body so where the blockage is in your body i can feel in my body when i'm when, I, when you're on my table right mm -hmm. so again this is because i'm i don't end with right. me exactly right yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah it's funny yeah. i want to I, I actually want to cover your the work the work you do with men but I yeah. let's take a little hiccup. Just I want to go on to the Love shaman you. one more second. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've had a resistance that maybe you could talk me out of. <laughs> in you know, saying I have friends who will say, you know, that well, they went to Peru so, and they've done this, they've done that, they've done plant medicine, they've you know, and and they are healers by you know by every measure. Um, but they'll they'll say, you know, I'm a shaman, and and it's funny because I feel like, well, what I do is very similar. There's not much difference um, that I can see, but I have this honor thing that I cannot call myself a shaman because it doesn't belong to me. It's like I, we've co-opted a a word. Yeah. And what would your life be like if you were pain free? If you are one of the millions who suffer from chronic pain, the thought of just one day without it may seem impossible. This is often because conventional medicine tends to fall short in the treatment of pain. Opting to prescribe pills or recommend surgery rather than getting to the root cause of the problem. But if you are suffering with emotional or physical pain, there is hope. Join the founder and CEO of Bowen College, Manol Boliger, Live online for your body-mind reboot. Learn how to listen to your symptoms and get to the root cause of your pain. Plus, be trained in basic Bowen therapy moves so that you can reboot your body for optimal health. 
You don't have to live in pain. You can heal. Stop the pain pill cycle by visiting www.yourbodymindreboot.com to learn more and to register. I I wonder if you could speak me out of that because it is the best word to describe it, but I, I feel resistant to using it. I'm really glad you asked this question. I, I, I dread this question, by the Good. way, because, you know, yeah, exactly. Because as an anthropologist, right, this is precisely the, the, the argument that the, that the academy has, right? I, we, I, by, by identifying myself as a shaman, I have co-opted a term from the Tungus right. language from people that I've never met and I don't know very well, right? right. Um, which is a fair, which is a fair argument, right? And yeah. I, and I don't, and I, but here's the thing, right? We, this is the term for what I do. This is the term for, this is the term we have in our language for, for, so that you understand what I'm talking about. When I say I'm a shamanic healer, you understand that I'm working with spirits. You understand that I'm, that I, that I'm not, uh, I'm not a surgeon. I'm not an acupuncturist. Uh, I work with you know, the energy in a person and what, and, and, and mostly what it means to be a shamanic healer is that the spirits work through me, that I get out of the way and the, the guidance as ex- exactly as you put it, work through me. That's what it means. Right. Mm-hmm. And, the, and here's the thing, there have been cultures around the world who do this since the beginning of time, as far as we can tell. Right, Mm -hmm. including Western cultures, including you know the ancient Celts, the ancient Germanic peoples, Mm -hmm. etc. Right, Uh, my my ancestors are were Celts. So, so Mm -hmm. it's a it's a fair argument to say that it's not our word. But what words would would you have me use? Right? Am I a medicine man? Okay, well that then then that's been co opted. Am I a spirit healer? Mm, Yeah, okay, but that doesn't really it. Uh, you know, yeah. it's just, it's it's sort of, I, I work with the language we have. And here's the other reality, right? I do yoga. Okay. I uh, practice Tai Chi. Oh. These practices do not come from my culture. Right, right. Right. But I do not practice a shamanism that I co-opted or stole from any particular culture. I mm-hmm. practice as the spirits guide me and have guided me. Right. And when I, de- when I talk to my ancestors, they have lighter skin than if a Tungus person talks to their ancestors. But I use, and by the way, I don't, I, not that I've never done plant medicine or I don't, or I have any problem with it, but I don't access altered states of consciousness through plant medicine. I do it through a mm-hmm. repetitive drumbeat. So, um, so this is a practice that's, that's really ancient and it's a word, it's a word that, that best describes what I do for, for the people that I'm talking to. And, Mm -hmm. and so, and, and yeah. And I, and again, I didn't, I learned a kind of shamanic healing that is called core shamanism that was started by Michael Harner in the the 1970s, um, who started the foundation for shamanic studies. And what he discovered is that, is this fact that there are different cultures all around the world that practice this form of spirituality. Mm -hmm. And there are some core beliefs that they share and he oh. taught those core beliefs and he taught us to, or he t- actually, my teachers are direct students of his. Um, he taught us to consult our guides so that we are in integrity, mm-hmm. right? So, you know, my guides don't have a big problem with me calling myself a shamanic healer. And I have, you know, a close friend who's a native American elder who also doesn't have any problem with me calling myself a shamanic healer. So, I mean, when a Tungus person comes to me and says, you stole my word, I want to talk to you, then I will sit and talk to them about it. But there's a lot of, you know, like, there's a lot of talk of cultural appropriation out of one side of our mouth and then cultural yeah. appropriation on the other side. And by the way, it doesn't, it doesn't go one way, right? Bollywood would not exist without Hollywood. Exactly. Right. Exactly. I mean, there's, there's McDonald's in Hong Kong, right? The, you know, the, like we, it, it's a cultural, it's a cultural interchange. 
and I know that it was dominated by colonialism. Nobody knows better than, I mean, uh, you know, yeah. I teach the colonialism when yeah, I talk yeah. about race. So, so I understand the colonialism aspect of it. Mm -hmm. um, but just, also it, while you were speaking, I'm thinking, you know, where a lot of the history we've been told, there's a lot we've not been told, <laughs> you know, a lot yes. of history we're gonna find out yes. probably yes. in the next year or so. And I think in that sense, it's like, if the point is communicating, right? So that we can connect with another person and they can identify more or less what you do, right? And they're fine with it. Then maybe that is the whole point. You know, the same reason exactly. I don't work doctor anymore because despite what I did, you know, it belongs to a set of conventions that currently exist in a paradigm that I also no longer want to identify with, right? It goes right. both ways, it moves. You know, they're missing yes, yes. skill set. But as a person, you move closer, at least that's how I feel, closer to what was always truer rather than the egoic labels of many things. So in that sense, you know, shamanic, it's a communication tool. Maybe that's the closest to see it, you know? Yeah, I like that. I like that. It's it's sort of like it, I could explain to you that I do these sequence of movements that align my body and then I and then it, it puts me in a really good place for meditation or I could tell you that I do yoga and then we, like we've had, we have an economy of words, right? Right. Yeah. And th yeah. so that's the way that's the way I look at it and I and mm -hmm. I think that aligns with what you're saying. Yeah, definitely. Okay, let's talk about this men's group and what you're doing there. I'd love to. <laughs> so so about three years ago, I went to a retreat called Sacred Man, Sacred Woman by Sophia Sundari. And at that retreat for the first couple of days, they separated the men and the women. And the men worked together and the women worked together. Mm -hmm. And I, and we did some really vulnerable work. We literally got naked and talked about what we were embarrassed about ourselves with each other. And I learned a lot from that retreat and coming out of it, I, I found that I trusted these men and that I didn't trust men uh, generally. And that there's some love that I, I was craving that I didn't even know until I got to that retreat. In other words, this masculine love, this supportive masculine love where we uplift each other and work together toward a common end. Um, and where we can get vulnerable with each other, where we can process our emotions together as men in ways that men understand and that women don't. And of course, there's the inverse as well, naturally. Um, so I got to the end of this retreat and I came home and I said, oh, I need this. I, I, I got to have this. Where is this? Right. Well, it didn't exist. So I started a group. Um, <laughs> I started a group called the Sacred Brotherhood and we started meeting once a month where and and the format is that we get together and we we share about what's coming up in our lives we get really vulnerable with each other and then we drum together and then we do a shamanic journey together mm. and this really brings us close and it's a support system that that I really need it's a support system that saves my relationship for example because traditionally men traditionally in the west men don't emotion aren't very emotionally literate and they don't process their emotions well so they turn to the women the women in their lives to process their emotions or help process their emotions and, and it puts a lot of strain on our relationships so what i've discovered is that with with this kind of purpose and meaning and mutual support from other men we tend to be less aggravated violent mm -hmm. um you know, and, and we, we have a, a resource that, that we didn't have that we, that doesn't exist otherwise. Mm -hmm. So I'm really, I've become really passionate about this men's work. And I really feel strongly that this is something that needs to go beyond this small circle of men that, that, that we have here in North Hollywood to, to um, the, the, the American society with all of the violence that we have, with all of the history of, yeah. of colonialism and oppression, um, would would be really well served by men 
coming together, supporting each other and in a, in a way that's then we can support all society, right? We can yeah. support, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there, there isn't enough of that. I mean, I have quite a few male friends who in their own provinces and whatever are actually doing a form of that, but it, because it's so necessary. And, and I, even though I have a, a wonderful relationship and, you know, my partner um, will process and maybe because of what I do, it's, it works fine, but it's, it's not the same as really being able to do this with um you know a group of men and and then men have been so like destroyed in our society and you know it, it's it's really it's it's it must be difficult to be a man you know with it's so it's, diff it's difficult to be a conscious man it, it's actually conscious. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's actually it's actually the world is made for men for toxic men for for men that, yeah, yeah. that you know for men that don't have any feelings or don't feel their feelings. But then of course, when you look at them in reality, they're pretty miserable, they're miserable right? Yeah. yeah. So, 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 you know, I spent all these years in the, in the, in the, you know, in the classroom saying, you know, this is what's wrong with our society. This is the, what's wrong with the way we do business. This is what's wrong with the way we do gender. Right. And then this voice started to appear a few years ago. Oh Yeah. What are you going to do about it? Mm -hmm. And so that's where I'm shifting my focus now. Mm -hmm. How how I can how we can bring change, real real substance yeah. change. And I feel very strongly that men supporting men alleviates violence. It alleviates family stress, family fracture, right? Because when you have men who can um, can safely process their emotions with other men, then they don't come home frustrated and angry and expecting something from their kids or their wife that they that they have no business expecting um you know and it, it it's it's really but even more importantly or just as importantly as this it you know we live in a patriarchal society and this is a really, really subversive way to change that mm -hmm. through men and by we example. have the power yeah and by yes example, exactly the, by example exactly tongues you know right for the sons and and for, for like you know there there are men who own businesses there are men who, who who are part of this right there are men who are surgeons who are part of this and then they go out in the world and they spread this among their groups and so on mm -hmm. and then we change what it what it means to be a man uh from the inside out yeah um that's you know that's the the idea that the model of what what i'm talking about mm. yeah i could just see the sequel what is a man <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we talk a lot about what what is the man, right? Yeah. Because it's, I mean, it's important. It's the polarity is important, right? Yes. What is, what is a man and what is a woman? And it's also important that we have some flexibility. Like, if you want, you know, if you have a female body and you want to show up as a man, then you're welcome right? as masculine, right? Then you're welcome. But let's let's be clear about the kind of masculinity that we want to promote and the kind of femininity femininity that we right. want to promote. And, you know, I'm very influenced by this sort of tantric, you know, yin, also Chinese medicine, yin and yang. Right? right, exactly. The balance that we have both. I mean, it's, I yes. was talking about this last night. It's like, it's just one chromosome. <laughs> right, you know? right. Yes. That's a minute yes. difference, right? But it is. But, but it, it is what it is, you know. And if you include all the DNA that we so called call junk DNA because we don't understand it, but it's even there's more no such thing as junk <laughs> exactly <laughs> you know so yeah. i think it's um yeah and to play with the energies that we have at hand exactly know? exactly we, we we've we by by subverting traditional society we got away from traditional gender roles which yeah. is freeing in some ways but it has most of us lost and unmoored Absolutely. because we we crave things that we don't understand why why because we're you know we're 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 gravitating towards the masculine pole we're gravitating towards the feminine pole and you know when we gravitate towards the masculine pole we want to you know we we want to be more conscious we want to be more aware and when we gravitate towards the the feminine pole we want to be more creative and flowing and um mysterious right uh, and and that's all natural and and in fact when 
someone who's at one pole comes together with someone who's at another pole that can really create some some beautiful energy and momentum yeah. to move forward as long as we're doing it consciously but we're yeah. so ingrained with with this unconsciousness with with you know our egos and like look yeah. what you did to me and you know uh, oh, yeah. you know all of this all and of this. the 3d world <laughs> Yeah. We're, we're we're out of time I, I, oh yeah with um <laughs> with just the the last few words you want to share whether it's um something you've written or something whatever whatever you you want or how people can get hold of you yeah so i have a website it's www.spiritualdigger.com so if you would like to come work with me uh, that is the place you go and you go to spir spiritualdigger.com and then click on the services page and then i'm also the executive director of a nonprofit called compassionate transformation computer community excuse me um and our website is lovect.net so www.lovect.net um and love for anybody and everybody to come check out what we're doing as part of that initiative. We didn't really get to talk about that, but, um, and then the Sacred Brotherhood Men's Circle meets every uh, second Friday of the month. And that website is agnestreehouse.org. Um, no, sorry, .com, A-G-N-E-S, and then treehouse.com. Uh, you okay. can get more information well, about the Sacred Brotherhood. And then we, we've also got new Brotherhood Circles coming up here at Heart Center LA, um, but I don't have the information or I would give it to you. Okay, well, maybe if you send it, we can put it underneath, you know, so we have- Yeah, great, uh, great. That well, yeah, that'll be starting up at the beginning of the year, so. Okay, well, thank you very much for spending this time. Thank and, you so much uh, for having me. Very knowledge. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for joining us at the Healers Cafe. If you haven't already done so, please like, comment, and subscribe with notifications on as I post a new podcast every Wednesday with tons of useful information and tips for natural healing that you won't want to miss.